Good day class. This is computer programming one and today we will discuss about introduction and developing personal entrepreneurial competencies. To better understand this topic, let us first break down and define the significant terms to use so we can easily understand facts in layman's term. First, let's talk about the word entrepreneur. According to Mariam Webster's definition, an entrepreneur is one who organizes, manages, and assumes the risks of a business or enterprise. Competent means having requisite or adequate ability or qualities. Now, combining the two words, please read the definition of entrepreneurial competencies that you can see on the screen. Now, let's talk about UNCTAD or what you call as United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. In 1998, through its empathetic program, it has identified and introduced um, behavioral patterns inherent and consistent to successful entrepreneurs worldwide. So class Empretec presented the entrepreneurial competencies in three clusters. These three clusters are achievement, planning, and power. Under these are different competencies that you can see as classified. And we will discuss them in this session. Now class, I want you to take a look at the example. Please read silently what ABC company said. Okay, now that you're, you are done reading, I guess you've already known that ABC company is planning to develop a system wherein teachers and students can have their classes. Also, they plan to add functionalities like automatic recording of grades and time-bound quizzes, etc. If you think about it, that really sounds so good. And what made them think of developing this system? Well, it's because of online classes. So class, what do you think is the competency that is being possessed by ABC company in this case? So what is opportunity seeking? So this means being observant or always on the lookout for opportunity to take a profitable business venture at a given situation or for a given product or service. Like the example in the previous slide, ABC company actually look out for an opportunity to develop a business that is profitable based on the need of today's situation. Now let's talk about another competency under achievement, so that is persistence. This means being steadfast in your decision and that you cannot be easily dissuaded or dissuaded when faced with difficulties. So for example, class, if you experience a lot of difficulties or struggles as you move forward with your goal and you did not give up, that could also mean persistence. So meaning you are persistent in reaching whatever your goal is, even though there are many things around you that are causing you troubles or difficulties. One good example also is what is happening around you, yet you continue to study. Some of you may be struggling with regard to financial matters or maybe with regard to your internet connection, with regard to um, family problems, yet you, you wake up every day and choose to continue with your studies so you can achieve your goal of, of graduating senior high school. That class is also an example of being persistent. Do you know the man I am showing on the screen right now? Does he look familiar to you? 
his Bill Gates class, he is the second richest man in the country, according to Forbes. As what you can see on the screen, his net worth as of September is 115.9 billion pesos. Imagine that. Do you know that before he actually became the richest man in the country, he also had his share of struggles and he also took the risk to be who he is today. The initial versions of the Windows operating system, Windows 1.0 and Windows 2.0, were not that successful when Bill Gates started, but his persistence made Windows the most popular operating system in the world. Another competency under achievement is commitment to work. This means the ability to perform assigned tasks, whatever it takes, even to the point of making certain sacrifices to make sure products or services are, deliver, are delivered on the agreed period. This means that even though the, the person encounters a lot of issues or problems along the way as he or she tries to deliver the products or services, he or she will still do her best to be able to deliver as promised or to deliver the results or the products as promised because of his or her commitment to work. For example, we have Mr. A. Mr. A promised to you that he will deliver you water, but then here comes the heavy rain. Mr. A didn't mind that heavy rain because he is committed to deliver water to you. So despite the heavy rain, for example, Mr. A still manages to deliver water to you as promised. So that is an example of commitment to work, meaning you are committed to do something despite the issues that will come along the way. Now let's proceed to our next topic. If you want to win big, you sometimes have to take big risks. This is according to Bill Gates. I believe everyone knows who Bill Gates is. If not, don't worry, I will give you a task about Bill Gates that is actually connected to our discussion today. Another competency under achievement is risk taking. It means taking risks in order to capitalize on a given opportunity. An example of this is you are not sure of how something will turn out there may be a slim chance of you achieving your expected results yet you try you you do it anyway because you want to achieve your goal in the end so that could also be an example of risk taking you are not sure but you do it anyway with the hope that it may turn out positively what if it turns out negatively that's still okay at least you tried so that is risk taking another competency under achievement is demand for efficiency and quality this means it always demands for something better even with good products or services improvement is still sought so it focuses more on efficiency and quality. By the way, class, before we proceed further, we also need to know what is achievement. So what is this cluster? When you say achievement, this refers to the set of competencies that support the motive for being successful in the entrepreneurial undertaking. Now let's talk about the other cluster, which is planning. This is a set of competencies that allows the entrepreneur to organize and prepare procedures to ensure that the business venture will keep moving forward. This will also allow the entrepreneur to be prepared and react well enough on any eventuality or setback he might encounter along the way. 
Now let's talk about the first competency under planning, that's goal setting. The first step that an entrepreneur should always take is setting a goal for the business venture. What's the importance of setting your goal so that you will have a guide and no matter what happens, you know what you need to do. So that is goal setting. Now let's talk about the next competency under planning that is information seeking. You have to take note that a successful entrepreneur is always keen about information. So he or she always wants to know important information in relation to his business. He has an open mind and always hungry or always strives to keep more information could be about the market, the competition, and more importantly about his customers. You have to take note class that a well-informed entrepreneur can create better ideas about how to improve the product or service. So from information, he is able to gather to innovation. Now let's talk about systematic training and monitoring. This refers to the entrepreneur's ability to create a well-organized and efficient plan that is logically sound yet simple and practical. This plan must lead him to achieve his goal and should keep him moving forward. He must also have the ability to track or monitor, take note of these words, if the plan is working or not and be ready to take alternative strategies when necessary. It's important that we have systematic training and monitoring because it helps us know the status of our business. It helps us know what else do we need to do. For example, if there are problems with our systematic training and monitoring, we will know right away if there are problems and we can already plan on how to achieve them because when you have systematic training and monitoring it is presumed that you have already set other alternatives or alternatives just in case the first plan doesn't work out so that is how important systematic training and monitoring is now let's talk about the last cluster which is power this is one of the most or perhaps this is one of the most rewarding aspects of being an entrepreneur why you being your own boss but this does not come until you have worked hard enough you have to take note you don't get the power to be your own boss until you work hard enough to set up your business efficiently and until you get it running smooth enough to be profitable and to endure after all as they say with great power comes great responsibility familiar the power cluster identifies two competencies that one might say the most personal and will mostly define the true character of a successful entrepreneur let's start with persuasion and networking this may be one of the most challenging tasks and may be exciting because when you say persuasion you will convince other people to trust or believe in you your service or your product for example or what's the importance of persuading other people if you are able to persuade people they will be the ones to spread the word for you and to make others believe in you as well now let's talk about networking what does networking means in this context networking here class means connection not necessarily friendship but at least you have a connection in which you know people and people know you in return it's better if your network or the networking that you have established or you have established is actually a positive networking which means a group of people who trust and believe in you because when you have connections it's easier for you to dominate or if not dominate to be in the market I'll give you an example about 
persuasion and networking have you noticed class that there are times that you hire someone because he or she is being recommended for example you are looking for someone to fix your tv and the, and then there's this friend who tells you that Oi, um, here's mr a he's actually very good at fixing the tv who would you prefer to fix your tv is it someone you do not know or someone recommended to you by someone you already know of course you will choose someone recommended by a friend or someone you already know that is the power of persuasion and networking because the person or that person who fixed the the tv of the person who recommended him to you might have actually pers persuaded your friend let's say your friend that he is a very good at or that is very that he is very good at what he does because he was able to fix the tv of your friend so in that way he was able to persuade your friend and also he was able to establish a network with your friend and that friend recommended him so that is how important it is the last topic that we will talk about is self-confidence under the cluster power. This is a strong belief upon yourself that you can complete a task no matter how difficult it might become. There are some people class who are smart and skilled but do not succeed because they are afraid to try. And there are people who are not really so skilled but they succeeded because they are confident enough to try. So self-confidence talks about a strong belief in your belief in yourself because no matter how people believe in you if you do not believe in yourself still nothing will happen. That ends our discussion class. Thank you so much for listening. Please prepare your questions if there are things that you want to clarify. I will answer them next meeting. I will also give an assignment and I will just relay that to Mayor, so please keep yourself updated. Thank you and God bless you all.